welcome back children the next video the second video and the same lesson cell the unit of life i'm going to deal with some important organelles the first organelles i'm going to look into in this video are the plasma membrane mitochondria chloroplast and the nucleus these are very very important organelles so let's get started plasma membrane chloroplast mitochondria and nucleus so the plasma membrane we know any cell is surrounded by a membrane called the plasma membrane the plasma membrane comprises of two important chemical constituents namely lipids and proteins the lipids this is the structure of a lipid this is the polar head and the non non polar tail the lipids are in arranged in a bilayer that is two layers there are two layers of lipids with the polar head facing outwards see i am drawing a number of lipid molecules with the polar head facing outwards and the non polar tail facing inwards so this is one layer of lipid now the second layer of lipid see polar head facing outwards and a non polar tail facing inwards see i have drawn two layers of lipids so basically a lipid molecule comprise a polar head and the non polar tail see and how the two layers of lipids are aligned with the polar head facing towards the outside and the non non polar tail facing towards the inner side so that i have drawn the lipids now the proteins proteins based on the ease of extraction they are classified into integral proteins as well as peripheral proteins see i am drawing the peripheral proteins peripheral proteins as the name suggests they are located peripherally superficially whereas integral proteins are either partially embedded see this is partially embedded or it may be completely embedded in the lipid bilayer so what i have highlighted in dark brown are the integral proteins and the one which is superficially located which i have highlighted in blue is the peripheral proteins so once again the proteins are of two types integral proteins and peripheral proteins peripheral proteins are located peripherally or superficially in the lipid bilayer here and there we can see the peripheral proteins and integral proteins they are either either partially embedded or buried or completely buried in the lipid bilayer so this is a completely buried integral protein this is a partially buried integral protein clear so this is the structure of a plasma membrane so once again the plasma membrane comprises of lipids and proteins lipids are arranged in a bilayer or arranged in two layers with the polar head facing towards the outside and a non polar face head uh, non polar tail facing towards the inner side see then there are the proteins uh, based on the ease of extraction they are classified into integral proteins and peripheral proteins peripheral proteins are located at the periphery or superficially and integral proteins are either completely buried or embedded in the lipid bilayer or uh, they are partially embedded in the lipid bilayer so this is the structure see the lipids two lipid layers and look at the uh, completely buried integral proteins and the partially buried integral protein see this is a partially buried very partially buried integral protein see so here i can identify only one and two partially buried integral proteins and here there are many completely buried integral protein see this is completely buried this completely buried completely buried integral protein now the superficial or peripheral proteins there are few of the peripheral proteins 
clear this is the structure of a plasma membrane so i am reiterating it consists of a lipid bilayer with the polar head facing outwards and the non polar tail facing inwards see non polar tail facing inwards there are two types of proteins integral proteins and peripheral proteins peripheral proteins and integral proteins either they are partially buried or they are completely buried see i have highlighted the proteins in integral proteins in yellow either they are uh, partially buried in the lipid bilayer or they are completely buried in the lipid bilayer now coming to why it is called fluid mosaic model this plasma membrane is referred to as fluid mosaic model and this model was suggested by singer and nicholson by two scientists singer and nicholson why did they suggest the fluid mosaic model why did they describe it as fluid mosaic Flu uh, mosaic because it has a mosaic like appearance have you observed the mosaic flooring you can see patches of different uh, colors that mosaic pattern so if you have an aerial view of the plasma membrane because of the integral and peripheral protein in the lipid bilayer it looks like a mosaic fashion okay that's why it is called mosaic and why it is called fluid the lipid bilayer permits slight lateral movement of the protein see the proteins are not uh, stuck or fixed in location they show slight lateral movements to and fro motion not up and down movements slight very very slight movements through the lipid bilayer to and fro motion or lateral movements just like the icebergs in an ocean how does icebergs move in an ocean is it up and down or is it swiftly uh, laterally no very slight motion if you observe also you can't find that it's moving slight movements through the lipid bilayer so this is known as fluidity and the speciality of this fluidity it enables the cell to grow enable cell division endocytosis and secretion so this fluidity of the plasma membrane is very very unique is because it helps in the cell to grow helps the cells to divide for helps in the process of endocytosis secretion etc now the next aspect is coming to the function the function of the plasma membrane you all have heard right from the lower classes it is called selectively permeable membrane or semi permeable membrane so we know it permits the materials through from outside to the inner of the cell so it the main function is for transport of materials from the outside to the inside or from the inside to the outside to and fro and the transports are basically classified into three main types of transport passive transport active transport and osmosis i'm sure you know what is osmosis movement of water from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration through a semi permeable membrane the semi permeable membrane is the plasma membrane now active and passive transport will be taken in a separate slot so once again a recap of plasma membrane any cell is surrounded by a plasma membrane the plasma membrane contains two chemical units namely lipids and proteins how are the lipids arranged the lipids have two components the polar head and the non polar tail they are arranged in such a way that the polar heads are facing outwards and the non polar tail are facing inwards so that is the arrangement of the lipid bilayer then the proteins there are two types of proteins integral proteins and peripheral proteins as the name suggests itself integral proteins are located inside the lipid bilayer either they are completely buried or partially buried okay and uh, peripheral proteins are located there the periphery okay they can be easily extracted they are located superficially now coming to the uh, fluidity it's called fluid mosaic the, it's called mosaic because it gives a mosaic like appearance from aerial view and it's fluid because it permits the lipid bilayer permits slight lateral movement of the proteins through the overall bilayer and this fluid nature enables the cell to grow divide secrete and helps in the process of endocytosis now the basic function of plasma membrane is transport it helps in transport of materials by different ways active transport passive transport and osmosis next 
I am going to take three cellular organelles, very very important organelles and the speciality of these three cellular organelles is that they are covered by a double membrane. So all, when we uh, talk about membrane bound organelles, it may be covered with a single membrane or double membrane, but there are only three organelles that are surrounded by a double membrane, namely chloroplast, mitochondria and nucleus. These are the cellular organelles surrounded by a double membrane. So that is a speciality of all three which is common. Then second speciality of this is that they have their own, they have their own genomic material. I will come to it. First let us describe the shape of each. Chloroplast is discoid or oval in outline. Similarly, mitochondria is oval or discoid in outline, but nucleus is spherical in outline. Now, I just drew only one outline, which means only one membrane. I must make a double membrane. Now, in chloroplast, the two membranes, so the name of the membrane, outer chloroplast membrane and inner chloroplast membrane are smooth. See? Whereas in mitochondria, outer membrane is smooth, whereas the inner mitochondrial membrane is thrown into infolding. See the way I am drawing finger like infoldings called cristae. Whereas in nucleus, there is the outer membrane and inter inner membrane, and these are interrupted by pores. And these pores are formed by the fusion of the outer and the inner mito, uh, nuclear membrane. Sorry, see the outer nuclear membrane and the inner, uh, inner nuclear membrane fuse. So the way it fuses, and so pores are formed. There are these pores are called nuclear pores. Clear? So once again, reiterating the first point, all the these organelles are surrounded whether it is chloroplast or mitochondria or nucleus, it is surrounded by a double membrane. The shape first chloroplast is ovoid or discoid, I mean mitochondria is ovoid or discoid whereas nucleus is spherical. I mean chloroplast look at the outer and inner membrane, they are smooth. Whereas look at mitochondria, the outer membrane is smooth whereas the inner membrane is thrown into infoldings called cristae. Look at nucleus, the nuclear membrane, both the nuclear membrane are surrounding the nucleus but they are interrupted by pores and these pores are formed by the fusion of the outer membrane and inner membrane. Now look at the first picture that is the chloroplast, see the inside substance the inner mitochondrial membrane surrounds is called the stroma whereas in mitochondria, the inner substance, the inner mitochondrial membrane surrounds is called the matrix. Show you the similarities between these three uh, important organelles. First similarity is all three are surrounded by a double membrane. So let us start with the double membrane and the shape. The shape of the chloroplast is disc shaped or ovoid, similarly mitochondria disc shape or ovoid whereas nucleus is spherical. Then next look at the outer membrane and the inner membrane smooth whereas in mitochondria the outer membrane is smooth whereas the inner membrane is thrown into infoldings and these infoldings are called cristae. Now nucleus outer and inner membrane are interrupted by pores called nuclear pores which are formed by the fusion of the outer nuclear membrane and the inner nuclear membrane. Now the substance or the inner compartment here in the first case on chloroplast is called stroma whereas the inner compartment in mitochondria is called matrix whereas the inner compartment in the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm. Now I am going to the different organelles specifically. So first let us take chloroplast as I told you there is the outer chloroplast membrane and the inner chloroplast membrane both are smooth and they surround a compartment called the stroma. Now this is the stroma, see stroma. Now within the stroma what is present? 
there are coin like structures so just look into this this is one coin like structure then over that piled is another coin then another coin another coin so each coin like structure is called the thylakoid so coin like our one rupee coin that way this is the coin like structure called thylakoid like that way there's a pile of coins see this is a pile of coins and this pile comprises four thylakoids this is called granum singular granum now you can see nearly 40 to 100 granum are there granny plural of granum granny are there see this is see this is one granum the second granum third granum fourth fifth sixth seventh eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen in this diagram they have accommodated thirteen granum or granny what is a granum pile of thylakoids and what is thylakoid coin like structure and this thylakoid if we analyze the thylakoid it is having a membrane coin like and the space inside the thylakoid is called lumen and this membrane surrounding the thylakoid is called the thylakoid membrane so the coin like structure is called the thylakoid the membrane surrounding the thylakoid is called the thylakoid membrane and the space within the thylakoid is called lumen that way there are number of thylakoids arranged like a stack or like a pile like a pile of coins this stack or pile of coins or pile of thylakoid is known as granum and that way there are many such granny and now look at the granny they are attached by rod like structures see rod like structures are attaching the thylakoids of different granny filamentous rod like structures see I'm highlighting the rods they are interconnecting the different thylakoids of the different granny and these rod like structures are called lamella they are called stroma lamella ok then besides these structure there are circular chromosomes called plasmids circular chromosomes called plasmids here and there then there are ribosomes then there are enzymes and here and there RNA so besides these important structures what and all are there I am writing this other structures that are present circular DNA called plasmids ribosomes enzymes and some RNAs now these are very very important for protein synthesis these are the raw materials for protein synthesis so once again a recap a recap of the structure of the chloroplast as I told you it is disc shape or ovoid it's surrounded by a double membrane outer chloroplast membrane inner chloroplast membrane both the membranes are smooth the central compartment or the inner compartment is called the stroma inside the stroma are coin like structures called the thylakoid that way a number of thylakoids are arranged like a pile of coins each pile is known as granum that way there are many granae nearly 40 to 100 granae exist and the thylakoids between the granae are interconnected by uh, filaments or rod like filaments called stroma lamella this is a structure main main structures inside the stroma besides this what are present as I written here what are present circular DNA called plasmids ribosomes enzymes and RNA these are the raw materials for synthesizing proteins now what is the function of chloroplast right from the lower classes you are learning the function of the chloroplast is to trap the solar energy during photosynthesis so this is only one type of plastid there are other plastids also plastids are of three types chloroplast that is the structure we studied now chromoplast and leucoplast we go by color chloroplast are the green plastic which helps in photosynthesis chromoplast are the colored plastic which helps to attract the pollinators so the, where are they present they are present, they are present in the petals they give colors like uh, orange yellow red violet etc that is the chromoplast and leucoplast are meant to store nutrients there are three types of leucoplast they are alluloplast 
to store proteins alloplast to store oils and amyloplast to store carbohydrates so once again leucoplasts are meant to store nutrients they are colorless plastids there are three types of uh, leucoplasts alloplast to store proteins alloplast to store oils and amyloplast to store carbohydrates clear so there are three types of plastid the green plastids are chlor chloroplasts which track the solar energy and helps in photosynthesis chromoplasts are the colored plastids which range from yellow red orange violet color they are usually found in fruits and uh, flowers i mean function is to attract in the flowers they are present to attract pollinators and fruits they are present to to attract the uh, dispersal agents only if the animals gets attracted they eat the fruit and disperse the seed then leucoplasts are colorless plastids they are meant to to store nutrients they are mainly of three types alloplast alloplast and amyloplast the first set stores proteins the alloplast stores oils and amyloplast stores carbohydrates i hope chloroplast is clear next organelle synonymous to mitochondria is uh, synonymous to chloroplast is mitochondria this is also ovoid or disc shaped but only thing the outer membrane is smooth and the inner membrane is thrown into infoldings as i drew earlier in foldings and what are these infoldings called these infoldings are called cristae and the cristae contains f1 particles just like the bulb with a stalk okay a stalk and a head stalk and a head f1 particles we learn later the details of f1 particles but remember the mitochondria are the sites of aerobic respiration they are involved in the synthesis of atp and therefore they are called the power house of the cell now as i told you earlier this is the outer mitochondrial membrane and this is the inner mitochondrial membrane the inner mitochondrial membrane are thrown into infoldings called cristae and the cristae bears f1 particles i told you the structure of the f1 particle it has a stalk and a head it means stalk and a head f1 particles and these are the sites for atp synthesis now just like chloroplast the other substances present in this uh, inner compartment what is the inner compartment called matrix in the inner compartment what and all are present just like chloroplast it contains the raw materials for protein synthesis namely ribosomes plasmids enzymes and rna clear so exactly like chloroplast the uh, inner compartment comprises the raw materials for protein synthesis in 12th and we'll be learning protein synthesis so you'll know which are the raw materials for synthesizing protein they are ribosomes plasmids enzymes and rna i hope this is also clear and the function of the mitochondria as i told synthesizes atp so they call the power house of the cell next organelle as i told you it is the nucleus it is spherical in outline and surrounded by two membranes but the membranes are interrupted by pores called nuclear pores see this diagram shows the nuclear pores at intervals and these nuclear pores helps in the movement of substances to and fro from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and from the cytoplasm to the nucleus now look at the outer membrane if i'm hi highlighting the outer membrane the uh, outer membrane is in continuation with the endoplasmic reticulum see what we see extra is the endoplasmic reticulum so the outer membrane is in continuation with the endoplasmic reticulum and attached with ribosomes see because they are in continuous uh, continuity with the endoplasmic reticulum like the endoplasmic reticulum they are attached with ribosomes and look at the inner membrane it is smooth okay it is smooth clear so that is about the membrane and those pores are called the nuclear pores now the inner compartment what is the inner compartment called it is called the nucleoplasm and it comprises two important organelles the two organelles are the uh, chromosomes in this stage interface stage it is it is represented like a network called the chromatin and also another organelle called the nucleolus they are spherical structures and they are the sites for rna rna synthesis 
so there are in again in higher standard that is in 12th sem we are going to learn the three types of rnas rrna trna mrna so the site of the synthesis for rrna is a nucleolus now you see the chromosome is in the form of thread entangled thread because every time when they introduced uh, introduce a cell it is always the chromosomes are introduced in the interface stage in this stage the chromosome is in the form of thread like structures called chromatin threads so once again a recap of nucleus it is spherical surrounded by two membranes or two nuclear envelopes and they are interrupted by nuclear pores formed by the fusion of the outer nuclear membrane and the inner nuclear membrane and these pores are called the nuclear pores the compartment inside is called the nucleoplasm it contains two organelles the chromosomes and the nucleolus the nucleolus are the sites for rrna synthesis chromosomes uh, they show uh, different shapes at the stage of cell cycle called interface they appear like fine threads entangled threads called chromatin threads now the speciality of the outer nuclear membrane it is continuation of the endoplasmic reticulum and so they bear ribosomes now what is the function of the nucleus it is a control and coordination center of the cell it controls all the activities controls and coordinates all the activities of the cell and also gives the uh, directions towards cell division so this is the main uh, important organelle of the cell i hope you have understood these four very important organelles and the speciality of these four what i have taken today that is not four the the latter three that is mitochondria chloroplast and uh, nucleus is that they are surrounded by a double membrane and they have a compartment in the case of mitochondria the compartment is called matrix in the case of chloroplast it's called stroma and the case case of nucleus it's called nucleoplasm i have taken three important double membrane bound organelles plus the plasma membrane i hope you have understood today's set of organelles thank you